Welcome back to River Fishing USA. Thank you so much for joining me. It is currently zero degrees outside, which is way too cold for me personally to fish. In today's video, we will be indoors and we will be discussing the best baits to use for all the common freshwater fish. If you use any of the baits that I mentioned in this video to catch one of these fish, or just want to show off your catches, make sure to tag me in your posts on Instagram. My Instagram and Facebook are linked down below. My Instagram is on screen right here. So here we go, here are my favorite baits. I hope that these help you catch a lot of fish this spring, summer, and fall. Starting off, we have the largemouth bass. Now the largemouth bass is probably the most common fish in most of North America. It is everywhere, it is iconic, it is classic, and to catch them, you can pretty much use anything. Like when I say anything, people literally have videos of them catching them on little toys and Legos that they add hooks to. For the main bass baits, I really have done very well on plastic worms just like this. I've also done very well on Senko worms, which I've used the wacky rig for, very easy to rig up, and Bass love them. The honorable mentions for the largemouth baits, I've done very well on the rooster tail, which we are gonna be talking about a lot more in this video. The rooster tail, in my opinion, is the best multi-species bait you can choose. I've also done very well on the whopper plopper, and don't sleep on these plastic scum frogs. They are very cheap, you can get them at Walmart for just a couple bucks and the top water action is awesome with these things. The next fish up on this list is the smallmouth bass, which you're going to find out later on in my channel. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more fishing videos, especially smallmouth. That I'm a big smallmouth guy. Smallmouth are, in my opinion, cooler looking and a much better fight than largemouth bass, especially for their size. Smallmouth, like largemouth, are very hungry fish, very aggressive. I almost said that the rooster tail was my favorite bait for smallmouth, the orange, yellow, and green color that you can get for about two bucks at Walmart. However, last year, I actually did much better with the Flicker Shad. The Berkeley Flicker Shad cost a few dollars, but these are literally smallmouth candy. I always go for them in the Fire Tiger color. I actually get a deeper diving one because if there's any current on rivers, the the short-lipped ones don't dive very deep, and I really like to have that extra lip so they just drag along the bottom, look almost like a little crayfish or a minnow moving, and the smallmouth suck them up. Even on days when the smallmouth weren't biting particularly great in other places on the river, they would suck these things down, and I could pretty much always expect to catch one on the flicker shad. For the honorable mentions for the smallmouth baits, there's so many to choose from, but I narrowed it down to the rooster tail, the Ned Rig, the Red Eye Wiggler, which is a classic old bait, but I actually did quite well with them for smallmouth this year. And the Storm Minnow Swim Baits. This is the bigger size that they make. These things are awesome, and I caught my biggest smallmouth of the year on one of these. The next species is Rock Bass, and they're very similar to smallmouth in terms of what they eat. They're definitely very different fish, but you can find them in a lot of the same areas. They're pretty aggressive fish and they like the same baits as smallmouth. My favorite bait for rock bass is probably gotta be the Ned Rig. These baits are super easy to fish. You wanna fish them where there's not a lot of current, otherwise they kinda get washed away in the water. The rock bass seem to suck up the Ned Rigs and I caught some of my biggest rock bass ever on that bait this year. The honorable mention would once again be the rooster tail. Just all fish love it. Next up on our list is walleye, sauger, and sawguy which are a very delicious fish. Many of you like to eat it. I like to practice catch and release, but they're very fun to catch nonetheless, although they aren't the best fighters. For walleye, my number one bait recommendation is long, skinny baits that sort of match the shape of a walleye, just like this Berkley jerkbait. Jerkbaits are one of the most classic walleye baits. Anything that is long and skinny, for some reason, that's what the walleye love to eat. And I caught my best walleye of the year on these Berkley jerkbaits and we're gonna get back to these later as well because these are awesome, the Cutter 90. The very close honorable mention for walleye is once again the Berkeley Flicker Shad. These things are walleye and smallmouth candy. They really do well for both of them and I caught some awesome fish this year on these baits. For walleye, I've also heard great things about the Berkeley Gulf Minnows. I haven't tried them yet, but I will definitely be giving them a go in 2021. For crappie, 
Once again, you got it, it's the rooster tail. These spinners have gotten me the majority of my crappie, including my personal best day when I got 30 crappie in one day in about two hours. I caught them all on the exact rooster tail that I've been showing off right up here. Twister tail crappie jigs have gotta be my honorable mention for crappie. Just, the crappie jigs are classic and they're made for crappie, so. Nothing else needs to be said. For bluegill and sunfish, my number one bait, which I've recently discovered works very well for them, is corn. You can pick up a can of corn at the store for like a buck, and it gives you a lot of bait, and it works great for bluegill and sunfish. You can throw it onto a single hook or a small treble hook, and probably within seconds. As long as there's fish there, they're going to be inhaling that. My honorable mention for bluegill and sunfish bait would be a classic worm, where you can't go wrong with a worm and those fish love it. The bait I caught my biggest and best channel cat on that it absolutely inhaled, and I've caught the most channel cats by numbers with, is also corn. Dirt cheap bait, easy to rig up. I fish it on the bottom, but you can also use a bobber and should do the trick either way. The honorable mention for catfish would be also a worm, or you can use a dip bait that a lot of people like. I haven't personally had experience with it, but I know many other fishermen love dip baits and channel cats seem to love them. The three flathead catfish I've caught in my life have all been caught on live baits or baits that look like live bait. I caught my second biggest flathead and my first flathead ever on a live alewife. I caught my second flathead and my biggest flathead to date on a red eye wiggler. And I caught my smallest flathead to date, which you can see in my first ever video on my channel. Check it out. Also with the Berkeley jerk bait. I use this clear and black color, which has done awesome for many different species for me, but that flathead inhaled this thing. The common thing about those three baits is that they are all either live bait or impersonate live bait. Flathead catfish have gotta be the most aggressive catfish species, and so they love those live baits as opposed to the more bottom feeding baits and cup baits that the other catfish species enjoy. For blue catfish, I have not yet caught one, although I do hope to in the next month. The number one bait that I have heard for blue catfish is cut shad, which just works like a charm, and I've seen so many anglers catch huge, huge, huge blue cats on cut shad, and without a doubt, cut shad is the top blue catfish bait. The honorable mention for blue catfish bait goes to cut Asian carp. Asian carp are an invasive species, so they're great to use for bait, and apparently the blue cats love them. White bass are one of the best fighting species for their size. They're great fun to catch, and usually where there's one, there's a lot. I've been fishing white bass for years, and the best producing bait for white bass has been the Sassy Shad Swim Baits. This one is from Key Tech, but a lot of different brands make these. I use either the three or the four inch. Just put a little jig head on top, jig them along the bottom or do a slow retrieve and the white bass suck those down. The honorable mention for the white bass, once again, goes to the rooster tail. I've caught a lot of white bass on the rooster tail in the spring as well. Those things just love them. Just do another slow retrieve with the rooster tail. The spinner really gets them going. A white jerk bait also does the trick for white bass. They love these things and especially in the winter time, I've caught almost all of my winter white bass on a white jerk bait. Now for the striper. The stripers are very similar to white bass. They're basically like a much larger and more aggressive version of the white bass. My number one bait for striper has been the white jerk bait once again. All year long these jerk baits should do the trick for striper. My honorable mention for the striper is cut shad. I have not gotten the most stripers by numbers with the cut shad. However, I have gotten my biggest and my PB stripers using that cut bait which I was not expecting. You can check out both of my videos. Back to back, I got PBs in two different videos. They're both easy to find and on my channel, so check those out. You won't want to miss those fish. Now for carp. A lot of people in Europe love catching carp. I think that they're a great fight. Carp definitely don't tend to take the typical baits that you fish for other game fish with, such as lures, spinners, all different types of things. The number one carp bait universally is corn. Once again, very cheap bait and easy to rig up. You're gonna rig basically all of these corn rigs the same. 
fish them at the bottom and you'll catch any of these fish that love the corn. The honorable mention for carp is bread. I have not yet fished bread, but I do believe that you just make little dough balls and put them on just like corn. For another common carp species, the Asian carp, you should just snag them and kill them. They're very invasive and don't belong in our rivers. There are so many videos about this, but it is actually illegal to release them. So if you know that they're right in there, just try and snag them with your jerk bait or whatever bait you have on and try and get them out of our river systems. They do make great catfish bait, so be sure to remove them and it's a win-win for everyone. For sucker, which are very similar to carp, but just a slightly different fish species, very good fighters and fun to catch and some people say good to eat. Worms are gonna be your friend when fishing for suckers. Also just get it in front of their faces. Suckers are a bottom feeder, so just get that worm right in front of them and that's what they like to eat. The honorable mention for suckers is gonna be any of the same baits used for carp, but they feed on the bottom and so any little morsels that they can eat, they will take. Gar, for me, are a tricky one. That is a bucket list fish I have yet to catch. However, I've seen many good things about rope baits. Rope baits, which I think can be custom made fairly easily, can actually be used to tangle up in their teeth and give you an easy catch. The honorable mention for gar are both crankbaits and cut baits. Cut baits they will take when sitting on the bottom, as long as another fish doesn't beat them to it. Crank baits, at certain points of the year, when you do a very slow retrieve, the gar will actually take. However, the only reason these don't get the number one spot is because they're very hard to set the hooks in their bony mouth. So good luck catching them. They are an awesome fight. However, they're just very hard to get that hook set in. So plan your baits wisely. Next fish species is the drum, AKA a sheephead. Drum and sheephead are universally known to take worms just like most other fish. However, the honorable mention, which is my personal number one bait however universally it may not be the number one bait for everyone I caught my PB sheep's head on one of these spoons this exact spoon the moonshine spoon this one glows just casting that out letting it jig along the bottom on the Great Lakes and those things suck that bait down we will catch monsters that are about this big make sure to subscribe to the channel because I will be doing a video on that when the warmer months come for northern pike you want something that is very flashy and shiny that will get their attention. These fish are extremely aggressive and an awesome fight. The baits you're gonna want to use for northern pike are spoons or spinners. Now spinner baits, whether you use a smaller one like a rooster tail or a bigger one like these baits, which are only a dollar at Walmart, can be awesome because they have their spinner going and it really gets the pike riled up and gets their attention. Spoons are great as well. This is a classic color that people say all over is one of the best pike colors and best pike baits. The only pike of 2020 that I caught was on this exact spoon. So any spoons that have these flashy, bright parts on them, especially if they glow too, have bright colors, are gonna be your friend when fishing for pike. The honorable mention for pike baits is going to be sort of crank baits and jerk baits, also flashy colors that will get the fish's attention. For musky, which I have not yet caught, I've hooked into one, your best friend is going to be all of the previous baits from the pike, only typically bigger. Spinners like these bass spinners or even bigger ones made specifically for musky are gonna be your friend. Musky also love to eat suckers, so anything that's sucker colored or is a swim bait, this is actually the same bait that I hooked my first musky on, which is a minnow, but it's a pretty big bait and musky seem to love it. Things that have a stop and go action are really gonna tease the musky and get them excited for lunch. I have not yet caught a musky, but I've done a lot of research and that is one of my number one bucket list fish for this year. Next up, we've got steelhead and trout, which the number one bait that everyone seems to be having good luck on is cured salmon eggs. Whether it's an imitation egg or whether it's the real salmon eggs that you cure and use as bait, People do really well float fishing for these up north and anywhere where there's steelhead or trout in stream. Additionally, for steelhead and trout, the honorable mention is going to be spoons and spinners. Now, spoons are a classic steelhead bait that they love these things. I do know that they like these orange and red colors based on the salmon eggs, so that might be a good color to try. They also do love these glow-in-the-dark moonshine spoons of any color, so give those a shot as well. For small and big trout, 
One of their favorite baits is actually these small black rooster tails. I hooked on this exact bait, which is partially why it's bent out of shape. Little shiver. There's a fish. There's a fish. That's I hooked my biggest trout ever, and unfortunately, it got away. However, it inhaled this thing the second it hit the water. In spring and fall, you will probably do very well with one of these small black spinners, and they just, they're awesome. Finally, last but not least, is the salmon. I have also yet to land one of these things. It was the fight of a lifetime when I hooked into one last year. The one that I managed to hook into, I hooked on a spoon similar to this, although instead of white, it was gold here. Your best friends for salmon fishing are either going to be spoons or cured salmon eggs. So guys, that is gonna do it for this video. I hope that you found this helpful. Once again, be sure to comment your favorite baits for any of these fish down below. I hope that it helps you guys. I hope that you guys are staying strong during these cold winter months. Make sure to drop a like down below if you found this video helpful and you wanna just help support the channel. It just takes two seconds to leave a little click and it would be very much appreciated by me. We will be back soon fishing again. I will be giving more fishing techniques and hopefully catching some monsters. I've also got some amazing series that I've never seen anyone do before on YouTube in the making. So stay tuned for those. Be sure to subscribe. Best of luck fishing and I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching.